Do you need help protecting your finances as you enter retirement? David Dickens of KC Financial Advisors has got you covered. Welcome to the Cover Your Assets KC podcast. Glad you're with us for another edition of the Cover Your Assets KC podcast. Walter Storholt here with David Dickens, President and Wealth Advisor at KC Financial Advisors, serving you with an office in Overland Park. And you can find us online at CoverYourAssetsKC.com. After last week's podcast, we talked about that we were going to have uh, a headline news item to discuss on today's show that talks about, well, the fact, David, that we now have more 401k millionaires than ever. And so if you're a 401k millionaire or want to be one, this is the show for you. Uh, you said that you had also seen that article, and hey, we decided let's make it a podcast topic. <laughs> <laughs> we did. I had seen, a, I'm not sure the, the source of yours, but I saw one uh, from Fidelity, Fidelity Investments, the mutual fund company. And uh, they were just talking about how many 401k accounts they had and IRA accounts. So separate, they do, um, they do 401k processing and they also have individual IRAs. And so they just did a calculation to say, well, how many millionaires do we have now? And it was pretty interesting. There were over 750,000 people, accounts, I should say, uh, at Fidelity that are now over a million bucks. And it, you know, it grew nicely because the market has been up nicely. But that's just Fidelity. So Schwab has a bunch and TD Ameritrade has a bunch. And a lot of 401k uh, processors around the country also have a bunch. But, you know, it's always been kind of a, a magical number. Now, a million bucks isn't like it used to be 20 or 30 years ago. But still, you know, kind of getting to be a millionaire where you have a, a million dollars of investments. That's kind of a cool benchmark for a lot of people. Well, I think that that is something that's nice for a lot of folks, David. But um, and even though we have more of those people, I think a million dollars in a 401k, maybe a million dollars total feels more reachable for a lot of people. But specifically in the 401k seems like still a long way off for a lot of Americans. Well, it does. And for instance, uh, Fidelity said that the average age of their 401k millionaire was 58. Okay. So it's sense. not like it happens in your necessarily in your 30s or 40s. It takes a little bit of time to get it up there. And then the average balance of their 401k millionaires was actually a million and a half. So there's people that have a lot more than a million in there to get the average to be a million and a half. So it is kind of an interesting benchmark. There's a doable roadmap to getting there. And that was really kind of the crux of what we want to cover today is, well, what's on that roadmap? How Are there ways to break this down such that it's doable for a lot of people, understanding that it's going to take some time, but what would those steps be? And you told me there were four different steps or four keys that we needed to cover on today's show to kind of hit some of those high points. And one one caveat here, the, the goal is to become a 401k millionaire with, with these four keys by what age? As soon as possible. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> But certainly before you retire. So that's the funny thing about money, Walter. There are people listening to this podcast and a lot of other people that would never dream of listening to this podcast who would say, man, if I had a million dollars, that would be awesome. And there are other people that say, well, how could you retire on only a million dollars? So the important thing to, li- to understand as you're listening to this is everybody's different. You get to set the bar wherever you want to set it. If your bar is 3 million, awesome. You've got probably some work to do. If your bar is $750,000, well, depending on what you do for work, you may have some work to do. The important thing is that you set the bar for yourself early enough where you have time to be able to get over it. If you want to retire at 60, you got to get busy. If you don't mind working till 75, well, you got a little bit more time. But generally speaking, Sooner is better than later. And the sooner you get to those goals, then your job becomes optional. And it's your option, not your employer's option. So I say, if you execute these four steps really well, I'm convinced that you're going to get to the point in your late 50s or early 60s where your work is optional. All right, we'll skip the drum roll and uh, just (laughs) head right into number one. What is it? (laughs) Number one, probably no big surprise to anybody is start early, but make sure you get a start. So there's a, a really good calculator. There's other good calculators on the internet. 
I happen to be a fan of these bankrate.com calculators because they don't advertise anything to you. They don't try to sell you anything. And they give you a number of different wheels and dials that you get to spin. For listeners of our podcast, you know that when I've when I've talked to you about term life insurance, I've told you to go to bankrate.com and they have a really good calculator that says how much term life insurance should I have? Well, this calculator will help you calculate how much am I going to have by a particular time if I make these particular decisions. So the decisions that, that I'm going to get ready to go through here are different ways to become a 401k millionaire. Age, current age, age of retirement, annual salary, annual salary increase, percentage of your salary you contribute to your own retirement. And if there's a 401k match for your employer, you can put that into. And then it also wants to know what rate of return is your money going to earn. So that's the place to go to get a what if calculator to say, well, how would I get to a million bucks by a particular time? Here's a couple of examples. My base case is that everybody should find a way to save 10% of what they earn or more. So this, on each of these cases I put in, that we're going to contribute 10% to our own financial well-being when we retire. In this case, the first case, I have a 25-year-old person who makes 50 grand a year. They're going to put 10% of that away, so they're going to be living below their means, which is super important. This person's going to retire at 67. They're currently 25. And their average annual rate of return is 6%. You say, Dave, 6%. It's got to be higher than that. You know what? If you put in 6% and you get to a million bucks over time, you're very likely going to be happy at the end of the, of the time. If you put in 8 or 9 or 10%, I think you're going to have an unrealistic view of what this, how this is all going to work out. So I use 6%. I set a zero employer match. If you get an employer match, that's awesome. That's just icing on the cake. But let's say you get none. So that's the baseline, that 25-year-old saving 10% of their income, and currently they're starting at $50,000 with a 2% annual increase. At age 67, they get to a million two. So that 25-year-old person making 50 grand a year can get to a million two, can be a 401k millionaire at age 67 by contributing 10% of their income. What if they're 30 years old and instead of making 50 grand, they're making 60 grand? Everything else is the same but they've started five years later. Well, they get to, instead of a million two, they get to a million, one million, oh, 023 by age 67 by contributing 10% of their $60,000 and growing salary. What if that person waited till age 35, but now they're making 85 grand a year, they're still gonna put in 10% and it's still gonna grow at 6% a year. Well, then this person, not starting till age 35, comes up with one million, $8,000 at age 67. They can still become a 401k millionaire and they didn't start till 35. What if they get to be 40 and they haven't started yet? They're basically starting with nothing. Well, at this case, to make a reasonable run at a million dollar 401k, they're going to need to put away 13% of their $100,000 a year salary. And at that point, they have one million forty-nine thousand dollars on their 67th birthday. So why did I go through those examples? Well, to show, to say that whether you're 25 or 40, you have a path to get to be a 401k millionaire. It's a lot easier when you start at 25 or 30. But even at 40, you have that opportunity. What you have to do is stay steady with your contributions. I like that. That's a great, great point. Good details. Interesting to see how the needs change as the uh, ages go up by a couple of years each time. All right. What's the next key for becoming a 401k millionaire? Well, the next key is, act- is what I actually just said, which is make sure you're consistent with your contributions. So that's a beautiful thing about having a 401k at work is that it comes out of your paycheck. Your contribution to yourself comes out of your paycheck and you never get to see it. So you don't have to worry about spending it. It comes out before the the money comes to your bank account. But let's just say you don't have a 401k at work. Well, you can still do an IRA. And right now the max you can put in in an IRA is six grand. So remember my example of a 30-year-old person 
making 60 grand and contributing 10% of that, well, that's their $6,000 a year that they're going to put into their IRA every year. Once you're over 50, you can bump it up to 7,000. And those amounts go up approximately each year such that you can put more and more into those accounts. Regardless of whether you can save the full 10% of your salary in your IRA, you can easily do it in your 401k. But whether you can do it in your IRA or not, save 10% somewhere. Preferably max out that IRA contribution and then save the rest somewhere. The other thing to remember is you are very unlikely, if you make 60 grand a year, you are very unlikely to come up to the end of the year and have six grand sitting around where you can just write a check and put that money into your retirement account. But what you're probably more able to do is 250 bucks every two weeks over that 12 month period so that you never really feel it and you get used to having less spendable income and you just do it over time, every two weeks, once a month, whatever your pay period schedule is. Try really hard not to wait till the end of the year to make that contribution. All right. That one's helpful as well. Good keys so far, David. What's up next? Well, the, the third would be don't be too risk averse. Now, everybody has a risk tolerance and most people hate it when the market goes down. And they're pretty good when the market's going up. But when you're, let's just say, age 20 to 50, you should probably have these accounts in about 100% stock market investments. And that's because you have plenty of time before you're going to need this money in retirement. And so down markets are going to have a lot less impact on you and on the account balance. What you're really looking for is the long-term growth. Uh, We've talked about dollar cost averaging, which I won't get into in this podcast. But when you're between 20 and 50, you should probably have a significant amount, if not all of that money invested in good quality growth stocks, blue chip stocks. Age 51, 54, 57, it's time to get some good advice because now you're, you're getting really close to when you're actually going to use that money for your retirement, supplementing your Social Security, your retirement income. 2001, dot-com bubble burst. 2008, the financial crisis. Both of those took five years for the S&P 500 to get back to where it was. Well, when you're in the mid-50s, you really it's arguable that you don't have five years to go backwards and then wait around while the market repairs itself. So that's where some sort of risk mitigation strategy, some type of advice is probably going to be helpful for you. Plus, when you're in your 50s, the dollar amount that you have amassed is way larger than the dollar amount you had in your 20s or 30s or early 40s. So you're much more likely in a down market when the market's down 30 or 40 or 50 percent, you're much more likely to get nervous and emotional and do the exact wrong thing at the exact wrong time, which is sell close to the bottom because you get this emotional realization of, oh my gosh, I need this money in the next five or eight or 10 years. So once you're in your 50s, get some good advice. Before that, you have every reason to think that you will be fine being fairly aggressive with that money. Fantastic, David. I think these are all really helpful tips and keys. We all want to become 401k millionaires if we aren't there already. What's the next step or the next key? I feel like we've combined maybe two in there. Are we on number four? Is this the last one? We are on number four, and and it's one that I learned from uh, a CPA uh, when I was in my late 20s, maybe early 30s. And he was doing my taxes for me. And he said, I have never forgotten this. It was almost, it was probably a throwaway comment for him, but it's stuck with me now for a long time. And it was, Dave, you got to find ways to make money while you sleep. And so I want to relate that specifically to your 401k or your IRA. You would prefer not to be in a position where the only time you're making money is eight to five every day. And so let's go back to that example of the 30-year-old who was going to save 10% of his or her income, and they had a salary of, of 60 grand, uh, but between age uh, 30 and age 67, they amassed a million dollars. Well, in that bank rate calculator, if you go to a second page, you'll be able to see, well, what do those contributions and ending balances look like? 
each year as they go toward age 67. So I printed that off. At age 50, this person has a 401k balance, an IRA balance of about 300 grand. Well, that seems like a long way from a million. And this person's already 50. So here's how this works. At age 50, the 401k balance, if it earns 6%, well, 6% of 300 grand is $18,000. The account is going to grow by $18,000 that year, even if this person puts in nothing. Well, at this point, their salary has grown to $90,000. They're going to put in 10% of that, which is $9,000. So the account is going to grow by $27,000 when they're 50 only 9,000 of which comes out of their pocket because the money is making money while this person sleeps. So there are a lot of other ways to make your money, make money while you sleep. But one of them is this miracle of compounded growth, compounded interest. The rich keep getting richer because their assets are working for them while they sleep. The only way you have assets that can work for you while you sleep is if you get started early, spend less than you make, amass some assets in a systematic way to let those assets make money for you. That's really, if you, if you look at, sum it all together, if you can find ways to make money while you sleep, to make your assets work for you, that's how you're going to get to be a 401k millionaire, or better yet, a 401k multi-millionaire. Love it, David. Thank you for the guidance and help on the show today, as always. And if you want to talk a little bit more about your specific situation of how you can become a 401k millionaire, and by the way, David, we should say a 403b millionaire or a, <laughs> or a 457, 457 millionaire or TSP or just a, millionaire. Just a, exactly. Or just a plain old IRA. There's That's There's nothing right. magical, as you're pointing out, about a 401k. It's just it's nomenclature that we use because most people understand popular. what it is. Yeah. But you're exactly right. All of those uh, tax-deferred retirement uh, plans, they'll all work very similarly to get you to the place where you've got assets that are going to carry you through retirement in the style that you'd like to be carried through. We're being inclusive here on the show, David, <laughs> make, making sure nobody gets left out here. So, uh, If you would like to become a millionaire in whatever way, shape, or form and, or account that happens in, uh, talk to David Dickens. He can help you strategize that plan no matter where you are along that age spectrum, whether you're just starting out or you're a little closer to retirement than uh, maybe you wish you were if you still want more time to save for retirement and want some good additional tips and customized ways that you can reach that goal. Or maybe your goal is $2 million. Like David said, technically that number does fluctuate from person to person of what's truly right for you. You can analyze all of that as part of the complete planning review process. That's the CPR process. All you have to do if you want to set that time up to visit is call 913-317-1414. 913-317-1414 or go online to coveryourassetskc.com that's coveryourassetskc.com and we'll put the links in the description of today's show so it's easy for you to find the contact information. David, thank you so much for the help and we'll talk to you again next week. Yep, I enjoyed this one and I'll look forward to next week, Walter. Sounds good. We'll catch everybody next time right back here on the Cover Your Assets KC Podcast. Investment advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, LLC, BCM, a registered investment advisor. BCM and KC Financial Advisors are independent of each other. For full disclosures, please visit our website at www.coveryourassetskc.com.